and welcome to this Halloween edition of A Splash of Blood, sorry, A Splash of Paint. 60 colourful minutes of artistic inspiration brought to you in association with the SAA. So sit back and enjoy some spooktacular creative tips and techniques from a selection of today's most popular leading artists. Let's take a little look at what artistic tricks and treats are coming up on today's programme. I'll be showing you some tips and techniques to capture the spectacle of summer as we continue our look at trees through the seasons. We'll take a closer look at some of the special effects and corrections that can be achieved from one of the most useful artist brushes available. Paul Beatty returns with his unique style of painting to create a stunning moonlit landscape using just two colours and the odd bit of cutlery. We discover the hit and miss joys of splodging with Jeremy Ford. And our resident bookworm Henry Malt discovers the beauty of the Peak District with watercolour favourite Jeff Kersey. So let's get started and continue our feature taking a look at trees through the season. As today, I'm going to show you a few simple tips and techniques to show you how to capture the lush green spectacle of a summer tree. I don't need a hand with this. So what we'll do, without laughing, is very simply use a medium tree brush and mixing up some aureolin and some natural blue. And that will give us just what we call a normal mid-green, really. And we can use this to paint in the basic canopy of the tree. It's a good idea to start with your pencil and just sort of put a bit of a wiggle from side to side. And then just at the center, that will give you the trunk. And the nice thing about this kind of wiggly pencil line is it gives you the ins and outs of the tree. And then we'll use that tree brush and we'll do pretty much do the same ins and outs, if you like, and then we'll start to stipple. So we'll stipple around the outside of it. A summer tree, of course, is very full, and it's, it's got a complete canopy of leaves. So it's very different to painting the spring tree, because the spring tree, you put the branches on first, this you put the one afterwards. So just to bear that in mind. And of course, the tree brush is great for adding the individual leaf effects. So it's more about thinking of the shape of the actual tree. Get the bits hanging down at the base there. Go over the top of the canopy as well because it gives you the uh, texture as it starts to dry off. But can you see you've got this little sort of ins and outs? This is really what we're trying to capture. Things to watch out for when you're painting the tree is things like um, Christmas tree pointy shapes at the top and round lollipop shaped trees. So that's always a good starting point for a summer tree. We're talking like a nice oak tree in full summer. What we'll do next is put that brush away and go for the small tree brush, which is great for adding the shadow. So clean it and just dry it off. And then we'll go for natural gray. But I'm just going to pop a little bit of aureole in with it, just so it's not quite as dark. And give it a bit of a stipple. And then we'll use this brush to give us the actual shadows. Now these shadows just go on the in points where it goes in and then comes out again. So we can just tap almost a line across the middle of the tree. And because it's darker, it's going to give you the in shadows of the tree. I always tend to put some of this at the bottom as well. There we go. And then one or two bits just higher up as well. Working its way across. Look for the in points, look for the out points. There we go. And then to blend all that together, clean your brush, wipe it almost dry. Just test it on the back of your hand, make sure it's not really soaking. And then just kind of tap generally all over the whole area. And what that'll do is that'll just work it all in. It'll blend the shadows into the damp green paint, what was slightly above. There we go. So it's starting to create a three dimension because the green area stands out and the gray area goes in. While it's a bit damp, if you use the corner of a paint tube and over some of those dark areas, it's a nice idea just to lightly scratch out a few branches of the summer tree because you'll see these on the inside points of the tree. And a paint tube is ideal for this. There we go, just add in a few. And 
areas. And you can see, just by putting that on, it starts to make sense. Let's put some trunks and things on this then. So we're using natural grey, quite heavy, burnt sienna to make it slightly brown. But it's mainly going to be dark. If you look at the trees in the summer, you'll see just how dark the branches look. And of course, you don't see many of them, but it always needs it. Right down the centre. Just coming out at the bottom. If I leave a little bit of a gap in the centre, so I can clean my brush, wipe it on some tissue, and you can make it just ever so slightly lighter as it comes down. There we go. And then just to continue this through the tree, but only over the dark bits. So it's almost painting like a post that goes right through the centre. I made it thinner as it goes up the tree. So you can see how it's all coming together. Put that brush away, use a rigger brush or a liner or detailer just to add that little bit of extra branch detail. And I tend to put these coming out from the main trunk. You don't want too many of these. And these will work really nice alongside the lighter ones that you did with the paint tube. If you don't manage to get it with the paint tube, you could always use a craft knife to scrape them off once it's dry, but don't use a craft knife while it's wet because it will tear the paper. So just adding a few branches. It's like putting a big sign on saying, I am a tree. I mean, this is just a few minutes and it's surprising how you can actually capture one of the hardest things to paint in any landscape picture is a tree. And quite a detailed, realistic tree as well. A few more branches branching out here, folks. And that's pretty much where we want to be. Just a bit of landscape on this, just to help things along a little bit. So what we're going to do is use the green that we started with and just put the bit of landscape coming down there. And it always wants a bit of scale. So what we'll do is use the dark color that we did the branches with. And we'll paint in a few rustic fence posts. And because it's Halloween, we can just pop in a bit of an old cemetery thing going off there. Just to give you that little bit of extra spooky feeling to it. Bit of a Celtic cross there. And then right at the back, very, very pale. You've got to, and it's essential that you have a little bit of a spook at Halloween. Just use a bit of water. And that's the phantom of the old spooky cemetery. So there you go, folks. Hopefully that's given you some idea and how simple it is to actually paint a nice summer tree. So there you have it, a nice little project you can practice at your leisure. Next week, I'll take a look at trees bursting with golden tones of autumn. Right, whilst I tidy up, let's take a closer look at some of the special effects and corrections that can be achieved from one of the most useful artist brushes available. I'd like to just show you a quick way of creating the sun's rays breaking through cloud using Woolly's Wonder Brush. I have this painting of the sky which is dramatic enough but I'm thinking it'll look even better with some sun's rays breaking through the cloud. And to create this all I need are two pieces of card and Woolly's Wonder Brush. So I need to position my card on the paper to create a sort of a cardboard mask. Now, you need half a dozen pairs of hands to do this, but if you position your card about, about right, and then tape it down with a piece of masking tape, we take Woolies Wonder Brush, dunk it in the clean water, and then scrub between the pieces of card. Now I'll do a couple of these, I'll do this one first. Take a piece of kitchen roll, just dab that dry before removing the card. All right, there's our first ray of sunlight. Let's create another one coming out over here. Have to be consistent by putting the rays in like this, you're saying where the light is coming from. 
You have to be careful not to have sun's rays going off in all directions. Otherwise it'll look like a, an alien mothership coming into land. All right, I've positioned my card again. Just carefully scrub out using Woolies Wonder Brush. Dab it dry with the kitchen roll. And there you have it, the sun's rays breaking through the cloud using Woolies Wonder Brush. Fantastic for creating any areas of paintings that you're unhappy with, or creating special effects and highlights. It's easy to see why the Wonder Brush is an essential tool for any watercolour artist. OK, it's time for a quick break now, folks, but join us in part two for today's Try Your Hand Out project as Paul Beatty returns with his unique style of painting, creating a stunning moonlit landscape using just two simple colours and that odd bit of cutlery. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>